I mentioned earlier about linear valves, they're prone to packing leaks, and I thought I'd just quickly address that. Uh, one of the reasons why, why they tend to have a lot of packing leaks is, is the motion of that stem going up through. There's the packing uh, stacked up right there in that packing lamb. Uh, when it's actually getting pulled up, the stem is actually turning because you have a threaded um, a stem up here on the top. It's actually turning and it's going in a linear motion together. So that co combination of the linear and the rotary motion actually does some minute tearing of the packing. It's not, it's not really visible, but over a period of time it will actually wear that out. Also another issue that causes um, packing to leak is that many times when, when people shut one of these valves, a linear valve, it's the old uh, adage that uh, when you tighten it up, if you, you know, tight is, is good and tighter is even better, and to the point where they crank down on that, well, the weak link here is the stem, and the stem will actually bend. It will, if you just take your finger and stick it straight out in the air, and then you bend a little bit, that's what happens. It has nowhere to go, so it's going to bend. And when it gets deformed and it comes back up through that packing gland, after it's deformed, it, it potentially can cause a stem leak. Also, if the valve is, uh, is installed on its side or if it uh, has an actuator on it, which really puts a lot of side load on the, on the stem, you can get side loading the stem. What it means by that is that the stem continues to ride in one area more than the, the top area, so you're going to get a little more load on it. This one is, is, I think, very, very interesting, and it turns out that in the power industry, probably this might be one of the more prevalent reasons why linear valves leak. I read the article several years ago in the Power Magazine, and what, what the, uh, the person discussed in that was that, that when the valve was in a closed position, it is down in the, in the media area where potentially high, high temperature steam would be, and the bottom part of the stem here is exposed to that higher temperature, and therefore it expands. So when that stem or that valve is now opened up and that stem, that larger stem, enlarged area of the stem down at the bottom gets pulled up through the packing, it actually opens a larger hole area uh, in the packing there. And then when, when the valve is completely open like that, you pull the stem completely out of the flow media, it cools down over a period of time. And when it does, you're going to, again, the packing starts to leak because um, it, it's shrinking back down to ambient temperature. So thought that was an interesting, um, uh, they thought it was a theory, but then they actually proved that it was causing, actually causing a lot of stem leaks, so uh, keep that in mind also. Okay, let's talk about globe valves. Uh, some of the great, good features about a globe valve is that this, again, unlike the gate valve, you can throttle or control flow with this. If you look at the inherent design of a globe valve, it has a tapered globe that's that it is like a, it is round in there. The flow comes in the bottom, and as this valve, uh, the plug lifts up, the flow goes in an orderly fashion around that globe and then out the other side. Um, one of the other pluses of the valve is, is the lower unseating torque. Because you have a tapered wedge and you have a tapered seat, but there's not a lot of surface area there that's actually touching, uh, unlike the gate valve where you have two sides of a wedge that are all scraping against the seat, which creates a lot of friction. So again, low torque uh, for unseating. You also can handle very high pressure drops with this. The inherent design of a globe valve is much better for if you were going to crack this valve open and let a lot of pressure go through, this would be a much better design to do it with in lieu of a gate valve. Uh, also, this valve usually provides good tight shutoff due to that tapered plug and, and seat ring. They are usually machined together and usually are lapped to a degree where they mate them together and have pretty good tight shutoff. All right, just like all valves, uh, there's pluses and minus to it. Some of the negative attributes to the globe valve is that it also has the multi-turn to operate, which slows down the opening, which, again, that could be a positive in some ways because it, it, the slow opening the, uh, alleviates a water hammer or anything like that. So the fact slow opening actually could be a plus. It also is expensive to automate. The packing leaks are common. Uh, probably the biggest difference is, is that the flow capacity, which is... Uh, the term is C sub V, uh, that actually would be much lower than a gate valve because you do not have that full port flow through that because um, you have to you know, go up around, you have a reduced or orifice area here where the flow goes through, so that definitely reduces your flow. One of the other negative factors is that unlike the gate valve, your plug is exposed. Even when, it, when this valve lifts up and opens, the, the plug is still right about there, just up a little bit above it. 
and it's still exposed to the media. So if you do have uh, river water or something, you know, that's gritty, you potentially could still do a lot of erosive damage to the, uh, the, the globe of the valve. Okay, especially in the power plant, the I mentioned the 2,500 pound and the 1,500 pound class valves, uh, globe valves that are used throughout the plants. Uh, there's two prevalent designs out there. There's the T pattern and the Y pattern. The T pattern has been around since the very beginning, and the Y pattern is more of a recent design in the last uh, 20 or 30 years and has become much more popular. Uh, there are pluses and minuses to both, and, and um, we'll just go into that just quickly here. The advantages of the T pattern is that uh, the tortuous flow path reduces the velocity, which helps for ideal uh, throttling during initial opening. A lot of these valves are used on startups, and when they first start the system up, they crack them open just to, to vent everything, and then they'll close them later. Well, this tortuous path where the valve flow comes in has to come up and around the disc and then out uh, does help reduce uh, the pressure drop and the velocities through that valve. This particular design also has what's called a welded bonnet right here, these little points right here. This is not a mechanical bonnet that threads in. It actually is welded there. So one of the pluses of that would be that there's no potential leakage points here, no body gaskets. It's all one uniform unibody. Also, the, the just general heaviness and thickness of, of the materials of a T-pattern valve is much heavier duty than the Y-pattern. And by the way, one of the reasons the Y-pattern was invented was to help reduce cost in, in making valves. And uh, you can use a lot less material when you use a Y-pattern. So it's physically, it just is not as, is not as uh, heavy duty as a Y pattern. One of the other pluses is the balanced alignment of the stem. We talked before about the packing uh, getting worn out. On a Y pattern, uh, the fact it goes at an angle will tend to wear on, on one side of the packing. OK, what are the advantages of the Y pattern? Well, unlike the T pattern, uh, the flow capacity is higher. And it's, you can see when this plug opens up, the flow just has to kind of go up a little bit over this weir and right back out. So it's almost like a straight through shot. It's just a, a little bump in the road. So the flow capacity is, is higher than a, a T pattern globe valve. Uh, the fact that it has a non-welded bonnet uh, that it's threaded on uh, may, per, may be a situation where it put, would be a potential leak path. But uh, one of the real pluses that most of the maintenance people like is the fact they can get into it and they can repair it easily. So from a repairability standpoint, uh, this would be a, a more favorable design. There is a less, less tortuous flow path, which would mean if you did have, uh, did crack this valve open, um, it would actually uh, cause less velocities going through the valve there. So uh, you would have improved erosion resistance. OK, let's talk about, uh, I mentioned earlier about linear valves. They're expensive to automate. I've got a couple pictures here. This, this is an example of uh, maybe like a Limitork actuator on a Y pattern valve. And this is a pneumatic diaphragm actuator that's been, both of these have been adapted onto manual valves. And you can see here in the drawing, um, they, first of all, they, they need to um, make a mounting pad that will adapt to having an actuator added to it. And usually that is, needs to be fabricated in a machine shop or some actually valve manufacturers have these pre-done at, at their own manufacturing facility that are meant just to have an actuator put on, put on them. Uh, inherently, the, the large multi-turn motor operators, uh, like the limit torques of the world and those people, uh, they are very expensive actuators. They typically start at four and 5,000 bucks a piece. They're not cheap. Uh, even the diaphragm actuators are kind of expensive. Uh, one of the other issues with with these type of valves is the torque seating is required. So uh, the motor needs to know when to when the valve is closed. So it has to have torque switches in there to know when it reaches the seat and it will shut off. So that's just all part of a lot of the uh, logistics that go into making a motor actuator for those. As I mentioned earlier, the fabrication of welding mounting of a welded uh, mounting pad uh, requires uh, some fabrication. The, all that cost goes into making these a lot more expensive than a, what a, a rotary valve, like a ball valve or a butterfly valve or something of that nature. Also, because these motor operators, you can see the size of this versus the valve. They're very, very top heavy, and they usually require some pipe support. So again, that goes into the added cost of automating a linear valve.